Oh, hello. Yes, we have new merch. There's a link in the description, itmerch.com. It all looks great, and it's available now for the next week and a half or so. Yeah. So buy it and support the show and get something in return. Now, this episode of Tech News Day is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Squarespace, and you'll hear about them later on the show. But first, let's talk about some news, starting with something that we don't often encounter on this specific show. A cool crime. Yeah, it's usually a weekly weird thing, but yeah. here we are on Tech News Day. And yes, we're going to get to that Apple announcement, well, the multiple Apple announcements, and a bunch of other big tech news from the usual players later on. But we have to kick things off with the story of a guy who managed to scam $122 million out of Facebook and Google using just one simple trick. Accountants hate him. <laughs> yeah, in terms of uh, high-profit scams that uh, seem way too dumb to actually work, but then inexplicably do, at least for a while, this one takes the cake. Mm -hmm. Between 2013 and 2015, a man in Lithuania named Ivaldas Rimasaskas, I think, mm -hmm. simply sent fake invoices to those two companies, billing them millions of dollars for goods and services that he had absolutely never provided to them. And because these companies are so big and already throw around millions of dollars like it's pocket change on a daily basis, uh, they just paid him. And it took quite a while before anyone even noticed what was up. It, it obviously is doing very important work. We would pay this. We don't, wouldn't want anyone coming after us. <laughs> Jeez. Now, uh, okay, to be clear, a Ramasos... Ramas it's great Rima, to... Ramasaskas. If, if you're going to commit a crime, you should have a name no one can pronounce. Keep you out of the media. <laughs> Your Honor, <laughs> you're we, free to we go. can't pronounce this man's name. He's free, free to, to go. go. Yeah. Uh, anyways, this person, uh, their grift was a bit more complicated and a lot more shady than it seems at first glance, which helps explain why he's now facing up to 30 years in prison. However, it, it remains a cool crime simply on the basis of its victims being two of the biggest and most powerful companies on earth. And I think over the course of all of the scams, the fact that they didn't notice it for so long just shows yeah. that they weren't really missing it. Yeah, if, if you don't notice uh, $122 million missing in 15 minutes, it's, uh, legally, it's not, yours. legally not your money anymore. Yeah. If the school bus doesn't pick you up 15 minutes after it's supposed to, you're free to go home. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah, this wasn't just a matter of emailing over a shitty Word document saying, hey, please pay me for that thing I definitely did for you. These invoices contained all sorts of forged contracts and letters which appeared to have been executed and signed by executives and lawyers from Google and Facebook. Rima Saukas, sure, himself, uh, he, he was pretending to be the Taiwanese hardware manufacturer Quanta Computer Incorporated and had registered a company in Latvia under the same name. A and to add an extra layer of believability, he spoofed emails to appear like they were coming from various actual executives. If you're going to make this much money, you're going to put the work in for it. Yeah. Cool Not real that. work, but... I mean, it wasn't, wasn't not work. He definitely had an effort. Yeah. Uh, he also apparently didn't work alone. Now, the lawsuit says that this was a group effort, though it doesn't name any of the co-conspirators or say how many people were involved. It's just this guy mm -hmm. getting left with the bag. Uh, but in the process of accomplishing this scheme, Rimasaskas and uh, his friends, they had to launder that money through various bank accounts around the world in order to avoid raising too many alarms, which itself is, you know, a bit of a... A crime. Uh, it's unclear how or when exactly the <laughs> victims, Google and Facebook, figured out they'd been duped and went to the authorities. But it, it is crazy that this even worked a single time. This means that for God knows how long, the accounting departments at both Facebook and Google were just signing off on very large payments without even cross-referencing their incoming invoices with their own internal accounting. That's crazy. Yeah. Google and Facebook, of course, are the two, the two of the largest companies that people all over the world blindly trust with their personal information and online security. So, not very reassuring that they. Uh, I mean, it I, took them two years to fucking figure this shit out. I can't even wrap my head around the just staggering number of invoices that are probably coming into Google oh, yeah. and Facebook at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Especially because, as we've seen with the people who take care of their terrible, upsetting videos, a lot of contractors that you have to pay. Mm -hmm. Maybe if these were employees. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Evaldus Ra Rima Sauskas eventually got caught and extradited to the U.S. in 2017. A free vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, uh, I've always wanted to come to America. All I had to do was commit a crime. <laughs> uh, last week, they, he pleaded guilty to wire fraud. Now, he doesn't get sentenced until late July, but he's facing up to 30 years in prison for his crimes. Uh, he also agreed to forfeit around $50 million, but it's unclear what happened to the other $73 million. The IRS has it. No. 
Uh, it's somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you would hope that he'd live like a king for the two years before this all blew up in his face, but who knows. Uh, in any case, the FBI says that this type of crime, which they're calling business email compromise, has become quite popular in just a few short years, with an estimated $3 billion in fraud committed this way since 2015. It's a lot. So yeah, you're going to want to get in on this before it's too late. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but really, that's just a couple of these guys. That's the thing. About a like, dozen of them or so. Like, if you look at like the operating budgets of like Google and Facebook, the 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 122 million dollars this guy took, that's like basically rounding off the extra cents. Yeah, he's actually doing them a favor yeah. by by getting them at a net uh, like a zero net positive, so they don't have to pay taxes. So they're actually this he was saving them money. That's right. And he brings the savings. Down to Mr. I guess his friend. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rimasaskis, you're free to go. Mm -hmm. Welcome to America. Welcome to America. You're a citizen now. Thanks. Anyways, <laughs> that's fun, but let's move on now and talk about Apple's latest big event from earlier this week, which uh, was actually a bit of a first for them. There was no hardware announcements and no operating system announcements. Instead, Apple used this event to unveil several new digital products, including a newsreader app, a credit card, a gaming platform, and finally, the long-awaited big reveal of their original content platform that aims to take on Netflix and Hulu. So let's just go ahead and, and look at what was unveiled in the order that it was unveiled, starting with Apple News Plus. And yes, it would appear that the digital branding of choice for the next few years is going to be Plus. Mm -hmm. Somewhere, the team behind Google Plus is having a nice long simultaneously laugh and cry about all this, because yeah. they, they started this, and... Where's, where's their award? What should we call whatever we're doing? Well, the original name and plus, because it means you're adding to the service. Yeah, and we would like to take this moment to announce that Internet Today is now Internet Today Plus. We should definitely do that for the second channel if we're, like, we're going to host like yeah. gameplays and stuff like that. Instead of number two, like MTV2, boring. MTV Plus. Plus. Internet Today Plus. Yeah. So, maybe coming soon. We'll, we'll... <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. Anyways, Apple News Plus, at first glance, it doesn't seem all that groundbreaking. Digital newsstands have been around for quite a while, including on Apple devices. What's different and innovative here is that Apple is trying to do for magazines and newspapers what Netflix and Hulu did for video content. For $9.99 a month, you actually get a pretty incredible deal. Unlimited access to 300 magazines and periodicals, which are nicely formatted for reading on whatever device you're using, including the LA Times and the Wall Street Journal. Both these newspapers normally have paywalls. The, the LA Times fee is generally extremely cheap, but the Wall Street Journal costs up to $40 a month. So getting that along with 300 other subscriptions, many of which also have online paywalls for just $9.99 a month, it's a really good deal. Yeah. Although, the Wall Street Journal, they clarified, they're like, it's not access to our full newspaper, it's a curated selection of our headlines, but like... Yeah. I mean, it's still pretty great. I, especially making this show, I run into that fucking Wall Street Journal paywall all the goddamn time. Mm-hmm. I'm a paid member of the New York Times, and uh, I keep, like, canceling Washington Post because then it'll just be like, oh, come on, well, how about we do 50% yeah, off? Yeah, well, that's the smart way to do anything. Yeah. you got to keep them on their toes. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, so we're a little biased here because we have to read a lot of news in order to write this show and our other shows, and we increasingly find ourselves stuck behind paywalls and having to read about big stories secondhand from other outlets, which is just not as great. Uh, really, though, despite the so-called death of print media that's happened over the last decade or so, the written word in magazines and periodicals is still largely the backbone of journalism and the primary source for most information. And if a Netflix-style model can keep that alive, that's a very good thing. Yeah. Also, online journalism nowadays is funded through ads, many of which track the shit out of your browsing habits, which is creepy and bad. And Apple here is promising that the ads in News Plus will not do that, which is good. Hmm, that's cool. Uh, now, next up was the new announcements around Apple Pay, starting with the fact that you'll soon be able to store your local transit passes in your Apple wallet. Okay. Which is cool as long as the local transit is advanced enough to accept it. Because <laughs> some of them aren't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the big announcement was, of course, the Apple Card, which will be both a digital credit card stored uh, as the Apple wallet in the Apple Wallet app, as well as an admittedly very nice-looking physical card made out of laser-etched titanium. Patrick Bateman would absolutely love this card. Mm -hmm. Billy McFarlane is rolling in his grave <laughs> yeah. because it is going to be the centerpiece of any conversation. Any, you any want very... to slam that down. It's got weight to it. It, it clangs. It's going to be a very big status symbol, much like... I, I was very impressed at how Apple turned one of the ugliest inventions, the AirPods, 
into a status symbol. Yeah. All through memes. Mm -hmm. He's got his AirPods in. AirPods in. He can't hear us. Uh, I see him everywhere now. It's it's crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, what makes this credit card more than simply a Billy McFarlane style status symbol, though, is it has a pretty intuitive uh, user interface that lets you track your spending a lot more efficiently than a lot of existing credit card apps and has a cashback system that gives you 3% back on Apple purchases, 2% back on purchases using your phone, and 1% back on purchases with the physical card. So like, if you use Apple Pay, that gets 2% instead of 1%? Yeah. Like, Even though it's the same card? The idea is like you're only going to use the card to impress people. We, yeah, <laughs> well, like, or p places that don't have Apple Pay, mm -hmm. but like, uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's gonna be the kind of thing where people, they'll they'll slam that Apple card down, but then be like, okay, oh, but I like, actually use the phone. <laughs> I, I get more Don't back. dirty up my pristine ivory Apple card with your smudgy sandwich mm -hmm. hands, mm -hmm. Mr. I work at the Witch Witch. AirPods Mr. in. Mr. Sandwich bye -bye. artist. Yeah. Oh, God, it's gonna be, so oh, God. Ugh. I already am not looking forward to my friends being like, you want to see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I take a picture of both sides? Going to be a lot of uh, a lot of cocaine being cut with the brand new titanium laser cut Apple credit card. And they're not even going to know that it's all over the card. Yeah. Pure white. Anyway, yeah. They also say that there uh, will not be any annual fees. There will not be international fees, overdraft fees, late fees, etc. Uh, you still will, of course, accumulate additional interest if you miss payments. But that's sounds pretty great. Uh, security and privacy are also a big factor here. With the the physical card. It only lists just the user's name, not the card numbers or expiration date. Mm -hmm. So if you lose that, you know, you're probably fine. Uh, they also say that your spending information actually lives on your device and never on Apple servers. And that Goldman Sachs, their partner in this endeavor, will never sell your data to third parties for marketing and advertising. They'll just leak uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, still, nevertheless, fuck Goldman Sachs, but yeah. okay. Uh, yeah, it, the, a lot of the benefits that are with this card are with your average Travelers or rewards credit card, which is fine. It's it's an I, Apple card though. I it's think cool. the app looks great. Uh, I I what I'm really hoping it like neither of us are Apple owners. No. Uh, but I what I hope with this is uh, that it pushes the banks, the existing credit card companies, to like clean their shit up. Mm -hmm. Maybe stop using as many hidden fees and whatnot. Yeah, because it's gonna be right there blatantly. Yeah, blatantly. It's, this is like very similar to like Google's Project Fi mobile carrier. Yeah. Where it's like. You know, it's not the best deal in the world, but you know exactly how much you're spending. They, they, the whole thing is very simplified. Yeah. Uh, so if that, if they can push the whole banking and credit card industry uh, towards that, that's a win for everyone. I got the new. Uh, they sent me the new version of the Venture Card that I have, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have the numbers on it or anything like that either. It's all, and you can just tap it. I don't know. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. I'm I'm not a big fan of credit cards in general, so I have the one. Yeah. In you, this. you should really, like... <laughs> don't get a lot of credit cards, kids. I mean, I, I know this looks very sexy, this yeah. Apple credit card, but if you don't need it... Yeah. If you don't need that, it, don't get that it. that interest yeah. really starts to get you. Yeah, it'll fuck your 20s even, up. It even fucked without, my yeah. 20s up. Even without the late fees, like, it's great that they don't have late fees, but, like, the interest alone... It's very easy, especially when you're young and broke, to just be like, ah, I'll deal with this later. And then fucking eight years later, you're like, oh, God. Yeah, what do I do about this? You'll learn about, the good thing about a credit card when you're young is that you'll learn the bad side of compounding interest yeah. so that when you're older and you've made up for all your mistakes, you can finally start doing the good side of compounding interest. Yeah, with like a 401k. Yeah, yeah, because... Yeah, yeah, compounding interest on a credit card is it brutal. Will, it will kill you. Uh, I finally just got my credit score back up. Yeah. So it takes a while. Yeah. Anyways, uh, next up, you can't do a presentation without gaming. What's up, Epic Apple Gamers? Which game came out you on don't stage exist. for this? Uh, I don't think anyone did, which is cool. Okay. They're not trying to pander, which I appreciate. All right. Well, that's that's something. Uh, anyways, next up was Apple Arcade. It's a new gaming subscription service that won't launch until sometime this fall. And if we know Apple like we do. That'll probably be next spring. Mm -hmm. um, February is a new fall. Yeah. Uh, there's also no word on cost, but basically you pay a monthly fee and you get unlimited online and offline access to a library of Apple exclusive games, which you can play in iOS or on a Mac or on an Apple TV. Uh, at launch, it'll have 100 games, all of which contain no ads or no in ad app purchases at all. Uh, now, obviously, this isn't going to appeal to the PC Master Race crowd or even the console crowd. It's going to appeal to the normies, let's mm -hmm. be honest. Yeah. Uh, but as often as we say, uh, th this isn't for you, it's for casuals, and that's fine. 
Believe it or not, there are some really great mobile games out there already, but the mobile game industry as a whole mostly sucks because the, the free-to-play model has obviously proven and been quite, to be quite profitable. Uh, also, these the games that they're looking to, ve to develop, phones, as the Switch has proved, as phones evolve, like they're getting pretty damn good and can run some pretty damn good looking games. Yeah. It's just that there hasn't been an actual effort to develop something that would resemble a AAA title yeah. for a phone because you can just have a simple game with in-app purchases that will make more money than that ever would. Yeah, right. The market, the way the market works, it's like you, I mean, companies still still do it, yeah. but they, they are ma actively making a choice to make less money. Mm -hmm. when they invest in making an actual good mobile game. Yeah, so this is a cool idea. I think it's going to be great if developers get on board and they're actually getting a decent cut of that pie and can mm -hmm. develop something good, knowing that they're going to get paid for it and not risking it all. So this whole thing, what Apple's doing, they're curating what look to be some, you know, your basic casual mobile game experiences, but also stuff that's just not slot machines in disguise. And that's good in general for gaming. Yeah, so this is good. It's a good thing. Even if it's not for you, this is good. Yeah. I'll be over on the Switch, which they had just announced two new models. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. Yeah. The biggest and most anticipated announcement, though, at least for us, was Apple TV+. Plus. This is their big original content push that's meant to compete with Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and traditional network and cable TV. Uh, it's a move that many have seen as coming years too late. And the fact that it's been played multiple times already, that didn't help that perception. And reports from behind the scenes have also painted an unflattering picture of the process behind all of this, with Tim Cook and other Apple execs seeming to take way too much of a hands-on role in the development and production of these shows, instead of, I don't know, just trusting in the top-tier talent that they had recruited for big money to do this job for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually they shelved an entire completed six-episode season of a show by Dr. Dre, because Tim Cook finally got around to looking at the final product and didn't like all that sex, drugs, and violence. Oh, boy. Did you see the recent news with Dr. Dre, how he tweeted out that uh, his daughter got into USA all by herself? Yeah. And oh, then everyone was like, you you donated like 70, 70 million dollars. Uh, oh, yeah. Delete. That's true. Anyways, back to being rich as fuck. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there's been plenty of reasons to doubt Apple's original content push. Uh, in addition to the general concern that the market's just way too crowded as it is, I think the only thing that I even know that they put up so far, I don't know that they've done more than this, but is the James Corden, like, carpool karaoke s show by yeah. itself. I think they've only, they've only made two shows, I think. The carpool karaoke one and then uh, Planet of the Apps. Mm -hmm. Can you guys do Steamboat Willie? No, there's no, not really any lyrics to that, so... Yeah, but I just love that dancing mouse. I love that mouse doing his dance on his boat. Spinning that wheel. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, Apple has, you know, now they've actually revealed the shows that they've been making. It seems like some of these could be great if people watch them. Yeah, that's the big thing. Can you get people <laughs> to watch it? Uh, there's Amazing Stories from Steven Spielberg, which is a sci-fi anthology series. And it's basically a reboot of a Spielberg-produced TV series from the 80s that was quite good, if I remember correctly, although... Nowadays, probably doesn't hold up. Yeah, probably best left in the memory. Also, there's a bunch of drama with Spielberg being like, fuck Netflix, and then coming out with the Apple shit. Yeah, Steven. Well, he's to be fair, this is a series. He doesn't like he doesn't like the movies being made by Netflix, but yeah. What okay. the hell, man? There's another anthology series from Kumail Nanjiani and Emily Gordon called Little America, which will revolve around true stories of immigrants to the United States. There's a show from J.J. Abrams and musician Sarah Barry Ellis called Little Voice that sounds like it'll be a romantic dramedy focused around the New York music scene. Uh, there's The Morning Show, a drama about the uh, behind-the-scenes inner workings of a fictional morning show starring Jennifer Aniston, Reese Witherspoon, and Steve Carell. Steve Carell's going to have a button that locks the door. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then there's a show called uh, C... S-E-E, -E, starring Jason Momoa, that takes place far into the future, hundreds of years after a virus kills most of the world population, and then leaves all the remaining survivors blind. Hmm. Uh, then there's a, there's a Sesame Street show called The Helpsters, which aims to teach little kids about problem solving and coding. Learn to code, kid. <laughs> well, uh, with the help of The Helpsters, I'll, <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, there's two documentaries from Oprah Winfrey coming, uh, including a revival of Oprah's Book Club, uh, and then there's a historical comedy series about the life of young Emily Dickinson. Uh, there's an alternative history drama series called For All Mankind that's about what would have happened if the space race between the U.S. and Russia never ended. And there's apparently several other projects in some stage of development, including an adaptation of Isaac Asimov's book, Foundation. So it is a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. 
But just based on the little amount of footage that they showed, these they look like quality shows produced by talented industry veterans and probably, presumably, executive produced by Tim Cook. I just had to take one peek before I put my Apple stamp of approval on it. What, what would happen if the Russia and, and, and U.S., they just shook hands and went to the moon together to have a picnic? And Mickey was there. We'll call it Picnic on the Moon. <laughs> <laughs> well, see you later. And it's just like, okay, everything you just said, just delete it from your mind. Mr. Gorbachev, pass the mayonnaise. To get anything on Apple TV+, Plus, the, the it's a lot of work because these production companies, they have to produce two separate shows. Yeah. One that they show Tim Cook and one that actually appears in the service. <laughs> what the hell? Where's the picnic scene? Ah. <laughs> uh, there's, of course, lots of remaining questions about this whole thing, though. Apple TV Plus doesn't launch until fall, so no exact release date either. There's also no word on pricing or whether any of this will be available to people who don't own Apple devices. Pretty big. Yeah, I would assume that they'd, if you have, like, a Roku or something, there's probably an app for it, maybe. Uh, I don't know. No, you need to own a $1,000 phone. Or just an Apple TV, but, I mean, judging by how they've done things in the past... I don't know. I don't know. If they were smart, they'd make this, you know, if you want your content to be seen, you you make it as available as possible. Yeah, because I bet they'll put, they'll I, probably I put the episodes up for I, on iTunes, but fuck opening that app. Yeah, it's a mess. <sighs> it's also unclear if Apple will be licensing or any existing content or just building up their own library from the ground up. We don't know if the shows will be released all at once, like Netflix does, or on a weekly basis. Who knows? In the end, the only thing that matters for the success of this is if the content's actually good. But we have no idea. It remains to be seen. It's at least a good first impression, though. Yeah, I'm impressed. I was. Uh, it's, and it's we a, hate Apple. Yeah. It's a, it, it, I mean, for one thing, it's just a lot more content than I expected them. Like, I thought they were going to maybe show off, like, two or three shows. And this is, like, this is a lot. And then the O Network is very angry. Damn it, Oprah. Oprah, I thought you said you were done on TV. Yeah, so I mean, honestly, this was probably Apple's most impressive live presentation in years, possibly since Steve Jobs was alive. It's, it's just refreshing to see them once again actually trying new things instead of just showing off new iterations of their existing products. Or a pencil. <laughs> yeah, so there ain't no normal pencil. Uh, is any of this enough to make either of us convert from Android? Probably not, but I mean, this is a good start. Well, we won't have any <laughs> Google shows to watch because they just canned all that shit. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, like, I, I'll say this about Apple. Like, when they when they make an effort at something, they, like, follow, through they follow through on it. Whereas, like, Google, they just throw everything at the wall. And even the stuff that's good that people like, they're just like, eh, well, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to take some parts of it and put it somewhere else. Yeah. Anyway, before we get to the rest of the news, we do have to take a moment to shout out this week's sponsors, starting with Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling service that finds and delivers clothes, shoes, and accessories to fit your body, your budget, and your lifestyle. Just go to stitchfix.com slash newsday and tell them your sizes, what styles you like, and how much you want to spend on each item. You'll be paired with your very own personal stylist who will handpick items and send them right to your door. Then you try them on, and you pay for only what you love, just return the rest. Shipping, exchanges, and returns are always free. There's no subscription required. You can just sign up to receive scheduled shipments or get your fix whenever you want. Make it a one-time thing. Make it a monthly thing. You decide. When you get hooked, you're going to need that fix all the time, though. <laughs> Stitch, <laughs> Stitch Fix's styling fee is only $20, which is applied towards anything you keep from your shipment. So get started now at stitchfix.com newsday, and you'll get an extra 25% off when you keep all of the items in your box. That is stitchfix.com newsday to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash Newsday. There's links in the description below. It's, we make it very easy for you. Mm -hmm. This episode also, by the way, is sponsored by Squarespace. Domains, websites, online tools, marketing tools, analytics, Squarespace does all of that. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, they've recently added a new feature, which is email campaigns. You're going to say more. You're going to sell more. You're going to stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns providing consistent content from website to email. You also get powerful editing tools to make it your own, customizable layouts for any message, and mobile editing so you can send anytime, anywhere. Yeah, you can use that email campaign tool to be like, hello, I'm a Taiwanese tech executive. I believe you owe me some money. You owe me millions of dollars. Don't do it, though. It's a crime. It's a crime. Do something legal. Yes. With your Squarespace account. Yes. Promote your art. Yeah, so Squarespace lets you quickly and easily create a beautiful website, whether it's for your business, your art, your products, your ideas, your wedding. Yes. I don't, I don't know why I said it like so, almost out of so the way. Lamely. 
yeah, you name it. Make a website for it. Everything's optimized for mobile right out of the box. It's got analytics that help you grow in real time. There's nothing to patch or upgrade ever, and they've got 24-7 award-winning customer support. Head over to squarespace.com newsday for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code newsday to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com newsday, offer code newsday. Now tell your parents about it. They're always building websites. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Tell them you heard it from us. <laughs> All right, now back to the news. Uh, according to a new report out of the Wall Street Journal that we can't read because it's behind a very expensive paywall, Nintendo is planning on releasing two new models of the Switch before the end of the year. One will be more expensive than the standard model and will feature beefier specs, though still not as beefy as the PS4 or the Xbox One. Uh, but the other will be cheaper and less powerful than the existing Switch and aim to be a successor of sorts to the 3DS product line. Uh, this will presumably kill off the standard Switch entirely. No. Uh, and yeah, it'll just be the new, more powerful one becoming the standard, which, you know, I've had it for the full lifespan. I'll give my beautiful future wife, who has put up with me... My future wife. ...wedding planning, my Switch, and I'll get a brand new one, maybe as a wedding gift. The perfect wedding gift is a hand-me-down game console with all your dead skin in all the cracks. Show me care. A little uh, bit of me's in there. That is good news for that VR, because... I mean, oh, the Labo? Yeah, because the resolution on the Labo kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. so this resolution will presumably be better, which is always better for VR. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, interesting news. Similarly, Oculus has effectively killed the base Oculus Rift model, the one that's been around for a couple of years. The inventory has pretty much completely dried up everywhere, including on Oculus' own website. Of course, this comes days after Oculus announced the Rift's successor, the Rift S. They really missed out by not calling it the Rift Plus. I know. Get with the program, guys. <sighs> Jeez. Uh, the Rift S, or the Rifts, will feature a higher resolution, a more comfortable design that's uh, very similar to the PlayStation VR, and most importantly, inside-out tracking, which eliminates the need for external sensors. Good. With inside-out tracking, the sensors are all in the headset itself, which results in much more accurate movement tracking with no blind spots and no need to go through the existing, very frustrating room setup process. With cables fucking everywhere. Oh, God, it's a mess. Uh, there's no word on when this is going to release, but it's, it's going to cost $400, so pretty much the price of the original Rift for most of its lifespan. So that's nice. Uh, so, moving on. Remember how uh, AT&T users started seeing that very sweet, exciting 5G logo at the top of their phone screens, implying that they were somehow, some way, using the next generation of mobile networking technology despite 5G definitely not being a thing yet? They were rubbing it in everyone's faces. Check it out, bitch. Yeah. 5G. Hold on, I can't hear you. I've got problems. Must be the new 5G, hasn't it? It's too fast. It's, it's your phone. <laughs> it gets, the 5G can't handle your phone. Yeah. Uh, now, this was, of course, not actually 5G, but rather 5G-E, as indicated to the very tiny, next, by the to very tiny E next to the 5G. And uh, a lot of people, including AT&T's competitors, felt like that was blatant false advertising. Why didn't they name it 5G Plus? I know. They would have been fine then. AT&T, they argued that 5G-E was in fact much faster than standard 4G, but uh, now we know for a fact that this is bullshit thanks to a study that found that not only is 5G-E not any fa faster than 4G, it's actually slightly slower than advanced LTE, which is what T-Mobile and Verizon are providing their customers without lying about. Yeah, basically there's LTE that's been around for years, and then there's advanced LTE, which is like an intermediate step. All the companies have it, they just don't call it 5GE, because that would be misleading. Mm -hmm. AT&T does. It is significantly That's all 5 ge It's advanced LTE. LTE. All the carriers okay. have it for new enough phones capable all the of receiving it. You need a, a carriers pretty new phone to get LTE it, but AT&T 5GE... So take the L already, AT&T. It Christ. is significantly faster than AT&T's standard 4G though. LTE. Sprint was okay, the only but that's the case with all the major characters, the carriers who have both LTE Sprint's and advanced LTE. LTE. So just take the L already, AT&T. Jesus that's a bit Christ! Of a self -owned for them. Sprint yeah. has hilariously been though the worst. Sprint yeah. was the only competitor the, to actually the, the, sue AT&T like, over this, and the same like study e, found that it's only Sprint's advanced LTE is significantly shittier than everyone else's. So that's a bit of a self owned for them. Sprint has historically been the worst. Yeah, Sprint just the study. It's like trying to keep up. Like 5G, it's it's only slightly less good than. The T-Mobile yeah, and Verizon ones, but then, like, over on the side, yeah, I couldn't it's just... Even load and here's Sprint, yeah. just 
Let alone chugging YouTube. along, trying to keep up. I had Sprint hey, yeah. when Ugh. 4G was Speaking a thing. A couple of years. Whenever 4G like, like first came out, I still had Sprint. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even load podcasts. Over something yeah. they Let alone a YouTube. It's bad. Anymore. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Now, speaking of lawsuits, the anymore. meme thieves oh. over at Fuck Jerry, they, they recently got Comedian served with one. Oh, God. And it was over something they promised Olerami not Coker. to do yeah. anymore. They mm -hmm. said this a long ago. Olerami They're not going to steal memes anymore. A comedian well, named Olra uh, They got sued. Mm -hmm. A comedian named Olorun Femi Coker tweeted out this funny picture back in January of a funny, alcohol-fueled, possibly fake text conversation. And not long after, this funny picture appeared on Fuck Jerry's Instagram, advertising Fuck Jerry's shitty tequila brand. And, uh, hmm, yeah, those seem to be the exact same thing. Now, for clarity's sake, Fuck Jerry posted this just before their big medium.com apology and, you know, their whole vow to change their ways. But that post didn't undo their previous misdeeds, and one of those misdeeds might now cost them a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just so bold of them. It's like, it's one thing to repost memes. It's another thing where you're now using your meme thief account to just constantly promote your uh, tequila brand. Mm -hmm. So now you're, you're literally using people's, other people's work in advertising, which opens you up even more to uh, getting sued. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what happened to them. Yeah. So, get fucked, fuck Jerry. Moving on now to our weekly update on how much Facebook fucking sucks. Their latest security oopsie is that, uh, pff, turns out they've been storing hundreds of millions of account passwords in a plain text document for years. Whoops. <laughs> it's unclear how this even happened, but, you know, storing passwords in plain text is a ridiculously amateurish move that's led to countless cybersecurity catastrophes at other companies over the years. So I guess it's good that this never managed to fall into the wrong hands. Or I don't know, that seems to be the case. We don't know. It sounds like anyone inside Facebook could have accessed this document at any time over that period of years. So uh, I don't know if you're still on Facebook, probably a good idea to go ahead and change that password of yours. Also Instagram, because they're all stored on the same servers. Or I don't know, better yet, just nip the problem in the bud by quitting Facebook altogether. Easy peasy. Uh, finally, in some potential ter terrible news for the internet as a whole, uh, the EU this week, they passed both Article 11 and Article 13, which claim to protect intellectual property, but have the potential to basically kill huge parts of the internet. Mm. No more reaction gifs. Or gifs. Maybe. We don't have time to really get into the details about this, but uh, I don't know, maybe we'll cover it next week. Basically, Article 11 is a link tax that would require services like Google News to obtain a license to link to news articles. And Article 13 requires online platforms like YouTube to catch copyrighted material before it ever goes live, as opposed to the current takedown model. Uh, it seems like it's uh, really ripe for ruining everything. Because what's going to happen here is these companies just are either going to stop yeah, doing things in the it, EU, or well, I just can't see them going so far as to donate, like to not donate, uh, to invest tens of millions of dollars into solving this problem because the EU's like link tax, where Google's just like, hey, how, where do you think those fucking views for your website come yeah, from? They give you the ad dollars. This, it's like this whole thing is just very clearly it's been done without a whole lot of input from the people responsible for. The internet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's unclear if abiding by Rule 13 is even possible for online platforms. Um, and Article 11 could mean that, like, <laughs> searching for something on Google would no longer return relevant news articles about that thing, which. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It would make my job impossible. Mm -hmm. it all, and it all just sounds incredibly bad and dumb. And because the internet is global, these changes uh, could affect everyone, not just EU residents. The internet is basically whatever country. Uh, with a big enough population with, that has the strictest laws. Yeah, that gets, sets the tone. Yeah, that sets the tone. That's why Apple's getting out ahead of it with the uh, paid news app. I mean, <laughs> they <laughs> kind of are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we honestly need to look into this more, but at first glance, it seems uh, very, very bad and wrong for the internet as we know it, to the point where uh, our show might have to turn into us just standing here, talking with no B-roll at all. Yeah. Which, a lot more... A lot more wipe cuts. Yeah. A lot of star star transitions. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of problems here in the States, but it seems like over there across the pond, 
They just make rat like just immediately they just make a decision and go with it no matter what the details end up being. Well, I mean, this is they've been talking about this for. We I wouldn't think, want to embarrass like, ourselves by backtracing and back like right. just taking it all back. These two have been they've been discussing these for like at least a year now. Yeah. Like they've had time to think about it. And even like the votes were not overwhelming at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This just seems seems like the wrong thing. Like, yes. Copyrights should be enforced, but also, like, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, check out our sponsors, and uh, please go to itmerchstore.com or click the link down in the description below. Get yourself uh, a new piece of merch here. I'm going to take my mic off. Sorry if it sounds weird. I got, a, I got the shirt on. Plus, I'm definitely going to have, like, pit stains now. Yeah, I'm sweaty. My back's all sweaty. Hold on. That's in the shot. Yeah, look at this one. It's a good shirt. Yeah, can't do this with Article 13. No, you certainly can't. can't. This is the Article 13 t-shirt. Yeah, uh, we're going to have yeah. to start distributing our show on floppy disks. Yes. And, of course, the anime hoodie, which is actually a zip-up. This is just a sample. And you can get in a t-shirt. And there's a bunch of other stuff on there, socks, pins. Yeah. The pins are great. Elliot's not wearing them right now, but they're awesome. There's a pin pack and the brand-new Shut the Fuck Up pin. They're good pins. Yeah. So check all of that stuff out. Watch our other episodes, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.